you're new in town or just new to this whole podcast thing, you're tuning in to Law by Night, the podcast that discusses all things vampiric with no fear of breaching the masquerade. In this episode, we shall discuss the Earthbound, a notorious group of monstrous demons known for their corruption. We shall discuss their origins, motives, and what sort of cultures these fallen live. Welcome back, little lamb. Oh, come now, you wanted this, so try not to look so sour. Turn that frown upside down, vampire. For what it's worth, you're not the first vampire to strike a deal with forces beyond their recognition. I assure you you, that you know about Kapala, you know, the the spirit bane that dwells within the soils of Transylvania. They have ties to the Meatsy clan of vampires. I understand you're also known of Nikonaranu and Earthbound of Neneberu. Kapala is said to be one of these earthbound as well, but what are they, I feel you wish to ask? Well, needn't you worry, little lamb. That is what I am here to provide. To put it plainly, the earthbound are monsters. Sure, all fallen still bear some resemblance to humanity due to their human hosts and low torment, but the earthbound are utter monstrosities, consumed with torment and driven mad by depravity and worship, bruv. They are the nightmares the mortals you once were. Combined with the power and intelligence of the angels, neither human nor fallen, but something much worse than most. Their goal has always been the total desecration of humanity, a word I choose rather deliberately. They wish to pervert mankind's collective soul and subjugate it to their will. They are monsters by our standards, twisted by ages of madness and hate into terrible abominations in that the creations of Lovecraft would shiver at. <laughs> the Earthbound are so far removed from the former angelic state that they no longer bear the visages of the house they once belonged to, the so crudely worded apocalyptic forms we spoke of last time. From my understanding, they instead develop unique forms with far more power than their old forms. These newer, twisted forms bear grotesqueries and deformities that render the mortals fucking mindless, babbling beings. Even the most debased, tormented fallen must turn away from an earthbound in utter disgust. As such, their power cannot be contained in the fragile mortal frame, though some cannot be tamed for the inverse reasons, though those are much, much rarer. So, the power of an earthbound is typically contained in an inanimate object or place. The place or item that contains the earthbound's essence is called a reliquy. Wellacrees have the ability to channel and store immense amounts of energy, surpassing human hosts in terms of raw power. For instance, while Fallen can only influence an area within a few miles radius of their law, some Earthbound have the potential to affect the entire fucking planet all at once. The fragility of the fleshy prison aside, a demon may possess a reliquy and become an Earthbound either because they were summoned and bound into such an object or because there was simply wasn't a suitable human host around when they lost all their previous hosts. However, Wellacrees do not provide the Earthbound with humanity and thus they are completely vulnerable to their torment, usually resulting in insanity. Regrettably, being confined to a motionless body with limited perception of the surroundings and no sensory input except for sight and sound isn't much better than being in the fucking abyss. Additionally, Eradicui's blank state and absence of a moral compass does not offer any respite from the fury and insanity that has festered in the abyss for thousands of years. Consequently, the Earthbound continue to deteriorate over time, trapped in their own torment with no escape, an incubator of madness and hatred. Despite being more powerful, powerful and knowledgeable about the world, they need excessive amounts of faith, which is only obtainable through the worship of devotees through thousands and thousands and thousands of fucking years. This is obviously not as flexible as the fallen they scoff at. That said, the earthbound do not sleep and need sustenance like the fallen do and are not affected by extreme temperatures either. The earthbound made themselves known to our earth long, 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 long before the rest of the fallen. Mages hell-bent on power and the crude understandings in infernalism brought forth powerful demons from the abyss. These hostless spirits would spawn hideous cults and bloody religions, but this would be much later to their origins. The origin of the Earthbound can be found in Lucifer's five Ark Dukes. 
his most trusted advisors and leaders during the rebellion and age of wrath, the thousand year war between heaven and the fallen. They were the leaders of his legions and led the fallen and their mortal allies against the host of the Elohim, the angels. Asmodeus, lord of the Silver Legion, was dedicated to uncovering the secrets of God and the angels still loyal to him. They also had the duty of bypassing all taboos whilst seeking the hidden truth therein. They acted also as teachers of mankind, telling them celestial secrets and hoping to help them fulfil their divine potential. The Silver Legion, alongside their leader, was the first legion to turn away from Lucifer's gold. Their base of operations was the city of Tabalat said to be the maze of towers and chimneys that gave off noxious smoke and the laboratories it housed. As the war against heaven raged on, it became a place of cruel experimentation on humans and test subjects, among its creations being the Ward of Breath and Towers of Flesh. Abaddon, Lord of the Ebon Legion, was created during the Age of Wrath by the Archduke Abaddon to make war against God without any concerns about humanity. They used humans as tools for experience and torture. They ruled Dubalel, the citadel of hate and violence which lay surrounded by fire and guises of poisonous gas. It is said that the fortress became the very image of hell as depicted by mortal artists some millennia to come. It was here that the Legion would create forges to produce a dark metal known as Seer, which they fashioned weapons and armors from. Before the fall, however, Lucifer made them bow to his will again. Then you got Dagon, Lord of the Iron Legion, which you shouldn't confuse with the Legion of Wraiths, was dedicated to supporting and protecting humanity from the host and its influence. Alongside the Ebon Legion, they were also staunch enemies of the host and fought them regularly, but without the savagery of their brethren. When Genomon was under siege, the Iron Legion held the line on sight, the Crimson Legion, until the last bastion fell and Lucifer was bound in chains. Balial, Lord of the Crimson Legion, was the first of the five legions of the Fallen, sworn to Lucifer himself and led by Balal. The Legion believed in Lucifer's utopian vision for creation, that it could be repaired and restored to a state of paradise for the benefit of Adam and Eve and their descendants. The Crimson Legion was largely populated by devils and malefactors. It remained loyal to Lucifer during the time of atrocities out of love for humankind and helped bring the other legions back under his command. And finally, you've got Azrael, Lord of the Alabaster Legion, were those who decided to hide from the host and gain strength until Lucifer called upon them. Their base of operations was the underground fortress of Kasajia, which later became isolated by malefactors. In case you were curious, he's the creator of Haven and its namesake of the legendary wraith Charon, but that's a conversation for a different time. They would all betray Lucifer in the end, undermining his grand experiments during the Age of Wrath. What the experiment entailed was exalting the humans to teach them about the divine spark inside until that spark would grow to such an extent to consume heaven, making them God's equals. In order to accomplish this, he commissioned ten rebel angels to tutor and guide mortals into building a vast empire known the Civilization of Ashes. This is also known as the Time of Babel. Right, this would anger two of Lucifer's archdukes, Asmodeus and then Abaddon, loathing a world where the humans would surpass them. Why would one trade one heaven for another? To them, this would make them slaves once more, but on the opposite scale. Would it not be better to be a wolf among the sheep rather than a loyal lapdog of heaven? Pride fueled their motives, agreeing to sabotage the grand experiments. This would be achieved by inflicting horrific torture on these people. A series of events I believe were called the Sixty Miseries. Women of plenty were raped by the Archdukes and bore creatures known as Nephilim, which are unlike the ones of Hebrew faith, at least I hope they are anyway. They hunted down and killed the ten and were in, then in turn hunted down and killed by Lucifer and his demon followers. Azrael was the only one not involved with the creation of the Nephilim to discover their origin. He traded his silence and the aid of the Alabaster Legion in rebellion against Lucifer for the right to their souls when they finally passed on. These dead Nephilim worked as ferrymen in Haven, a job which was made easier due to their dual nature. What has happened to these dead Nephilim is mostly unknown. Abaddon, however, was said to create his automatations too well, possessing some of the creator's arrogance and disdain for mankind. They did not wish to rule the humans and sought to dominate it, as well as slaying Lucifer's watchers, the aforementioned Ten, rousing the fury of the Morning Star himself. In turn, both he and his followers slew the Nephilim. 
Whether any exists these modern knights is fucking unknown to me. Soon we are all cast to the abyss, our true names wielded like weapons as many of us hoped to find their Lord Lucifer in the impenetrable darkness. Soon they would all learn, as we would all eventually, that Lucifer we weren't there. Rumours of plenty would form, most of which I don't remember, but there was this really interesting one where it was said that the creator had banished Lucifer to a worse place than the abyss, which I personally find to be fucking whimsical. The most popular one of the Prince of Lies, as many decided to dub him during this period, was he had betrayed his own, setting them upon their own during the fall. Basically, he fucked off to save his own hide. What we thought was regardless, the time of Baber was gone as God summoned forth the deluge that would wipe out not just the mortals we had created, but wash our names from their mouths. A callous baptism, forcing humankind to start anew, praying to new spirits and gods, well, mainly one god, but developing new societies and technologies. They dreamt new dreams and they had new desires. Only one demon had done this, and that was Lucifer, carrying out his goal. He also gave certain mortals the names of his lieutenants, unaware of how malformed with hatred they had become. Why would he? He did not know the abyss. He either escaped or was bloody good at hiding. I suspect the latter, but Personally. Eventually, humans built five idols, temples, etc. for each Archduke, and summoned them through rituals, sacrifice, celebration, yada yada yada. The Archdukes quickly took control and began working towards humanity's destruction, much to Lucifer's horror. Other lesser fallen were similarly summoned using sorcery. Eventually, get this right, 666 of the creatures that became known as the Earthbound were brought into being. Yeah, now you know where that number comes from. They thrived in the pagan communities and face and practically ruled Rome, and so they say. The Archdukes were not how Lucifer remembered, which I don't think needs any saying, but you know. The Abaddon was a maddened beast. Asmodeus had something of an alien mind. The once cryptic Asriel was a holy god bent on becoming the incarnation of death, and Lucifer's most trusted advisors, Dagon and Belial, were now lunatic manipulators thirsting for his blood. Whilst they could go through thousands of years of generation of face and cult, I will summarise that most were sourced to one of these Archdukes, to spite God and his Christian followers. Despite many faiths and religious ideas, worshipping the same God or concept of God, it is almost like it was a badly written piece of fiction. For your interest, I did hear once that Lucifer supposedly spoke to some Earthbound in their dreams to side with him to rebuild the world in his original vision, to which in turn showed him the future he created and would create. This would cause him to flee and hatch a new plan. So trying to fix his fucking huge cock up, uh, Lucifer tried to destroy the Earthbound, but their ranks swelled faster than he could reach them. Hundreds populated the world over, at least, and Lucifer was said to not contain the strength he once did, so direct fighting did not work against them and the humans they manipulated. Lucifer decided that, since the Earthblood fed on emotion and faith, the only way he could contain them was to take all that away. He began to encourage logic and rationality in the peoples of the world, even to the point that many viewed them as non-existent and mythological. However, with the coming of Judaism, Christianity and Islam, as well as the subsequent Age of Enlightenment, many mortals turned from their wicked ways, and by the end of the 1600s, most of the Earthbound had fallen into slumber. And in case you were curious, I had heard the occasional rumour that Lucifer is located in Los Angeles in all fucking places, and is working with developing the film and entertainment industry in the 1930s, but if you want to believe that, you may. I don't give a fuck about him, and neither should you really. As I mentioned before, the Dread Kings could not sleep forever. They and any other Earthbound that lost the support of their followers through one means or another were shaken awake by the Great Maelstrom. They knew their time was brief and made a dash to find worshippers however they could, lest they endure another 500 years of dreamlike slumber. The world has gone through many atrocities and hate and war crimes the Earthbound could feast upon, a new world for them to crush and command. They are here, existing, raping the world of its faith. Where they once held dark crypts and cursed cathedrals, now they host club scenes, universities, prisons, and even entire fucking villages and towns. The Earthbound are fueled on hatred, power, reverence, and wicked oblivion, ruling from the dark reliquies, puppeteering madmen, fools, and crazed worshippers, toying powers they did not understand. They will do whatever they can to claim dominion over us all, and they are not content on waiting any more than they have to. Your vampire master warned you not to play with demons, and now I shall warn you as well. Do not play with a fucking Earthbound. To be kept updated, 
Follow the Law by Night VTM Twitter and Instagram pages to find out when we upload each episode. You can also find out by subscribing to the YouTube channel and clicking on the little bell, as you'll be immediately notified when the latest episode is live. Until next time, farewell.